Okay, I admit it. Uh, the last week or two or six or 20, uh, my mind's not really been on business that much. Um, it's been on things like this last couple of weeks, skiing, uh, writing, uh, <laughs> what to get my family for Christmas. Talking to my kids, what do you want for Christmas? Well, how about a gift certificate to this? Uh, you want some ski pants? Yeah, I need some ski pants. Okay. And of course, you know, my mind is on politics and the pandemic, which is nutty and uh, appears to be totally out of control. So how are you doing? This is Tim Patterson, Trade Show Guy, Monday morning coffee, middle of December 2020. Yes, uh, two to three weeks left and we'll kick this year out on its ear. You can find us at uh, tradeshowguy.net. I don't think I've promoted the Facebook page. If you just bring up Facebook and search for Trade Show Guy blog, you should find us there. We'd love to have you uh, subscribe or like or whatever the current method is for that. Uh, so, hey, I got a, a great guest this week. Uh, I've had Peter Shankman on before. It's been a while, at least a couple of years. And I, you know, sent him a quick email and said, hey, what do you think? And he said, sure, no problem. We set it up. And uh, it was a pretty short uh, conversation, but uh, he's a he's a keynote uh, speaker, uh, author, longtime author, uh, and is an interesting guy to know. And I was curious to know how he was doing, how his business was doing, how uh, the clients he works with are dealing with the whole pandemic, how the shift in the business landscape is affecting him and, and the people he works with. And of course, uh, you know, he's a longtime, if not lifelong, New Yorker. Uh, so I was curious to know how New York City was doing. I know it's not doing well, but uh, yeah, Peter didn't disappoint and pulls no punches. I want to welcome Peter Shankman back to Trade Show Guy Monday Morning Coffee. Peter, it's uh, really good to see you. And you. Nice to be here. And I uh, appreciate your time. I know that uh, you're a busy guy. Uh, so let's talk about what you've been going through. I know that uh, New York is just a nutty place to be right now. And in the green room, you said it kind of sucks. And I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. But uh, I mean, people are still there by the millions and, and somehow they're making their way through. So. Well, they are, but they're really kind of not. We're down 14%. We have about 14% of the, of the city that is left. Offices are down, office uh, space in terms of people actually going into their offices is down anywhere between 30 and 75%. Um, if you walk into midtown Manhattan, like the, the 50s and the 40s on 6th Avenue, uh, any day of the week right now, it is a, it is a ghost town. Wow. Um, one out of every three stores on 9th Avenue, the street I live on, uh, one of every three storefronts is closed. Um, it is um, on my, in my apartment building, I live on the 56th floor, uh, there are 10 apartments on my floor. Uh, mine is occupied as is one other down the hall. Oh my goodness. So That's it crazy. is, uh, it is pretty crazy. That is, that is very nuts. That's very nuts. Um, let's talk about business a little bit. Um, uh, you know, everyone's got a pivot, I guess. I hate that word, but uh, that's kind of what people are talking about. What are you advising clients as uh, they move into 2021? Is there any way to do any serious planning for 2021 at this point? Yeah. I mean, my, my year is incredibly booked. I'm, I'm doing very, I'm very fortunate. I have a ton of, uh, a ton of uh, virtual speeches uh, lined up. I went right to virtual. The only thing I really miss is travel. Yeah. Uh, you know, travel was how I, how I uh, wrote my books and how I uh, went into my own mindset. And, and I, I really, really miss being on planes, but uh, I can tell you that, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, my speaking revenue is actually up this year. Um, <laughs> you know, when you can do one keynote in Australia at, at 8 AM and another keynote in China at uh, 11 AM, it, it's actually not hard at all. You know, you just have to uh, uh, make it work, but it's actually pretty easy. The, uh, you know, a 45 minute keynote in Tokyo now takes 45 minutes as opposed to four hours or for four days, which it used to right. take. So it's, um, yeah, it's a new world, but you know, and, and, and look, speaking is going to come back. There'll be, there'll be conferences towards the end of 21. They'll be small at first. Um, I don't see things like CES or, or the, the uh, mobile, mobile world Congress coming back anytime before 23 at the earliest. But right. um, you know, I see that, that small shows will come back and quite frankly, large shows don't necessarily need to. If, if I'm a, if I'm a business who spent, you know, a million dollars or more at CES, I'd be focusing very, very heavily on virtuals right now. And I'd be, I'd be uh, you know, I'd send 10 people to my show and have, have uh, take some of that money and, and create a, uh, a, you know, holographic imaging room where I bring in my clients and everyone comes in, they meet me there and we have the meetings. And, you know, there's just, it's, it's shown that there's been a lot of non-necessary reading. Look, I, I love going to shows. I love travel and all that, but you know, a lot of it isn't necessary. And um, I'm not saying it won't come back, but I'm saying that we're going to look twice at, you know, companies are going to look twice at sending half their, their team to a conference when, you know, uh, 
you can do the same thing online virtually. And I'm not saying that, that, that Zoom is the end all be all. I, I, I hate Zoom just like everyone else, but it does what it's supposed to do. Yeah, and I hear so many different things from uh, exhibitors, uh, obviously spending a lot of time in the trade show world and hearing what they're talking about. Uh, and a lot of them are, are chomping at the bit to get back to shows because they they love the face to face, but they do realize that uh, because that's it, it, in some industries they really that's where they generate most of their leads, and others are like, well, you know, we're going to wait and and see what happens because we don't need them as much as we thought we did. So I think it's just a mixed bag um, all across it's the one board. Thing, it, one thing about it's one thing about liking the FaceTime. It's another thing about being able to do the same amount of business without having to get on a plane. And if yeah. that's the case, you know, that's going to be really important. I mean, that being said, I, you know, I, uh, I look forward to traveling again. I, I really, I really miss it. I really miss, uh, I miss uh, being on that plane 14 hours later, emerging with a book. What I, what I don't miss are the morons who seem to have intensified uh, their moroning um, ever since this thing hit. You know, I, 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 I have a mask and on it, it says it goes above your nose too. And it goes over <laughs> your nose as well. And, and I'm just, you know, I'm at the point where I'm, 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 I'm going to cut a bitch pretty soon. It, the next person that I see not wearing a mask properly is going to get cut. We just shut down restaurants in New York city again. And this shit could have been again, over. Yeah. This could have yeah. been over seven months ago. If we had any level of competence in Washington and if everyone was such a goddamn selfish bastard and I'm, you know, I'm sorry for, 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 for uh, being that bold, but that's where we are. And it's, it's bullshit. But well, Peter, I've seen your stuff on, on uh, Twitter. I know that you, you uh, ranted a little bit about that. So I was not, uh, you know, that's not surprised the way you're, you're feeling. And, and I, I, I can appreciate it. I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, you know, in fact, some of the things that you mentioned, uh, a lot of the speakers I know and, and uh, the in-person you know, uh, pr professional presenters that you see at the, the, at the booths and stuff, they've had to pivot too. And a lot of them are very creative from creative backgrounds or coming up with, uh, you know, s satire videos and things like that for, you know, doing like a knockoff of a green day song or something like that, that they're now providing for their clients. And so they're getting paid in different ways, but they're also doing a lot of the, the same things as well in front of just a different situation. Um, I'm curious, given that we're still stuck in COVID, do you sense that companies are, you know, chomping to the bit to get back to face to face, uh, or, or or is this going to be more permanent, or just a permanent shift in, in a lot of stuff that's going on? The ground is moving underneath us. I know that it is, and you know, I think that that companies have always needed to uh, to shift and needed to move, and companies who don't know how to do that simply won't survive. You know, and uh, people who don't know how to do that won't survive. And we're looking at a neurodiverse economy as well. We're looking at people who. You know, 25% of the workforce is going to be neurodiverse. That's ADD, ADHD, autism spectrum, executive function, all those things. And, you know, if you don't know how to hire for those creatives, if you don't know how to keep those creatives happy, you're going to lose. And so I think that, that you know, the concept of, of a shift or a seismic shift isn't a new thing. Uh, it's just, I think it's the first time that, that the majority of the world has ever realized, oh, this shit's important. Yeah. Hey, I'm curious to talk about your book. I know you had the ADD book out. Uh, it's been, what, three years now? Does that mm -hmm. sound about right? Mm -hmm. How did that do for you? And I'm curious, uh, it, it was a little different uh, approach for you from the other business books you've, you've written. I know that's your life. I know that you've had to deal with it. Yeah. And you ended up getting with a book out of it. It's the first book that I did um, uh, that, that wasn't business focused entirely. And it did very, very well. Um, it's my best selling book. I think it's in the third printing right now. And uh, it's or fourth printing, something like that. And it's, it's, you know, better than the books that I do for, I mean, the books that I did for business were fine. Zombie Loyalist did great and all that. But the beauty of this is that I get emails every single day and literally every single day from people who say, oh my God, there are other people like me. You've changed my life. This is incredible. I love it. It made me feel so good. Um, it, 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 every day I feel so great that I'm actually helping people. And the book and the podcast is still going strong. We're 250 interviews in, I think. Um, it's good stuff. It, it makes me really, it makes me feel great. It makes me really happy that, that we're doing the right thing. Yeah, and I, I would agree because I've, I've uh, my youngest son had some uh, ADD going through school. I think he's a little different now. He's, he's he's figured out how to control it, or maybe it wasn't as bad as we thought. But uh, obviously, people can uh, have it onset in, in uh, uh, adults, and I think I'm a little bit that way. Um, maybe not as extreme as it it, it, uh, it could be, but uh, you know, I get distracted a lot. So, you know. um, but I, it was a great good book. I, I appreciate you writing that. So. Uh, I'm curious if there's anything else before we wrap it up. I don't want to respect your time that, that uh, is kind of top of mind going uh, into 2021 that you're doing or that your clients are doing. First of all, just wear the damn mask. It's not that hard. Yeah. It goes over your nose. It goes over your mouth. Just wear it. And, 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 and you're not going to, you're not going to escape from it. You're not going to die from it. Wear the mask and shut up. I think the second thing um, I would say is that we're going to see a lot of things becoming the norm, the concept of working from home, the concept of, of, um, 
being more accepting of different ways of working, which is actually a good thing. And so if anything good, quote unquote, comes out of this, uh, comes out of this virus, that's going to be one of those things. All right. Peter, I appreciate your time again. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Good talk to All you. Right. Take care. Thanks again to Peter Shankman. I really appreciate the time, Peter. Um, find him at uh, petershankman.com. And there's some other links, I believe, in our show notes as well. This week's One Good Thing is a book that I finished recently on uh, my Kindle app called Memories in the Drift by Melissa Payne. It came up as, a, I think, a freebie because of the Amazon Prime membership I have. And I didn't know anything about the author or the book. And I just kind of read a brief description. And I, I obviously didn't get the idea what the book was from the description or I wasn't paying all that much attention. I kind of thought it was a murder mystery. I thought, I like murder mysteries. Well, not at all. Not at all. It's a fascinating story uh, written in the first person about a woman in a small town, Whittier, Alaska, which really exists, uh, who has short-term memory loss from an incident about half of her life ago. She's in her you know mid to late 30s. And uh, she goes day to day, not remembering a lot of people that she meets. She does have really good memories of stuff before uh, 18 or 19 when this incident took place. I'm not going to give away too many details, but I was just fascinated by the book. Uh, it was really well written. Uh, one of the writing coaches I have uh, tapped on the shoulder for a couple of hints on how to be a better fiction writer was, said that you really need to put the emotion on the page. And this woman, this author, knows how to put the emotion on the page. It was just uh, it was a great book. Great book. I highly recommend it. So that's uh, this week's one good thing. Have yourself a great week. We'll do it again next time as we wind down 2020.